Eastern State, Prison Philadelphia, Episode 3. We left off with this image that captures the, the interior architecture that borrows from the cathedral. This is one of the many religious influences on prison design in general, but Eastern State in particular. And I'm engaging in a form of technique that curators oftentimes use, which is to foreshadow, to give a little bit of information in advance that will then be explained in greater detail later. As I mentioned in the previous episode, this is an, an institution that really likes to be photographed. And we know that this is one of the, the second order tiers, meaning those tiers that were built beyond the original blueprint that added an, uh, uh, another floor. We know that because we can see the upper level in this particular photograph, illuminated by the skylight. And for those of you who have my book, Escape to Prison, this is featured on the cover. Gives us a nice depth, optical appreciation of these corridors. The Vanishing Point provides an enthusiastic appreciation of this linear design. There's a lot of absorption that's, that's being delivered in this particular institution as a prison museum. Absorption is a concept used in museum studies that allow visitors to really take in the, the environment, the immediate surroundings. And again, this is a, originally designed as a pay, place of pain and suffering. However, as a prison museum, it opens itself up to the logic of architecture by de Havilland. I think de Havilland would really appreciate this transformation, this repurposing of his original design for tourists. And what we're looking at here is a window panel that on the other side, if this image is clear from your standpoint, is the central tower. More about that later. And this is a really informative cutaway that gives us a clear understanding of the interior of these cell blocks, but also allow us to understand the Quaker philosophy of penal reform. Off to the right-hand side, you see a prisoner who is hooded and hooding was not necessarily a punitive tactic. It was one that served a couple of purposes. One of which is, in more practical terms, is, is to keep the prisoner from visualizing the floor plan that might be used to his advantage or escape. 
but it was also for purposes of protecting the anonymity of the prisoner. Because the Quaker philosophy along the lines of penal reform were to allow the, the inner soul to reemerge through isolation and through contemplation and so on and so forth. The prison terms in Eastern State in its early days were not terribly lengthy as they are compared to, to prison sentences today. Uh, very often the prison sentences were less than three years, oftentimes maybe two and a half years. And the prisoners were allowed their own cell. As you can see, it was large enough not only to have a bed and some furniture, but also a workspace because they were given, they were given chores that were, for example, making brooms. Um, outside vendors were allowed to benefit financially from the labor of these convicts, but it also gave the convicts something to do. So there wasn't a lot of complaining um, part of the prisoners. They were kept busy. They had a Bible they could read. They were in total isolation. Now, a couple of other features of this design are worth noting is that de Havilland was not only a good prison architect, but he was also a really good engineer. And at the bottom of the frame, you can see this is an elaborate heating system. And although it went through periods of um, experimentation, when sometimes there was, there was, there was smoke that was, that was pumped into the, into the cells, they had to, they had to fix that problem. Um, for the most part, this was an elaborate uh, prison with really well thought out plans for engineering. I should also mention that, they, that these cells also had their own toilet, their own plumbing. At a time in the 1820s when President Jackson in the White House was still relying on a chamber pot. Now the corridors are also an important part of the design because total silence or as much of that could be achieved by the guards was, was part of the, the overarching objective of patrolling the, the corridor. And the prisoners would, uh, rather the, the guards would oftentimes put large wool socks over their shoes to muffle the sound, to preserve this, 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 this environment that was pure of and, and void of, uh, of any distraction or noise that might interfere with the reform process. That's the Quaker philosophy, that people are good. And then those who go astray can be brought back within the boundaries of normative behavior through solitude and contemplation, and then released back to the community. And the anonymity, the hooding, allow these prisoners to return to the community without other people who may have recognized them in the institution to then stigmatize them and say, yeah, I know that guy, he was at Eastern State. The Quakers were well ahead of the game. And here's another cutaway. Gives us a little bit of dimension. European prison advocates and wardens who visited the institution were really taken back by a couple of things, one of which is how much room the prisoners had. This is a, their own recreational space that was outside, although partitioned. Europeans were particularly impressed with the extent of food that was allowed to be distributed to the prisoners. Now, the prisoners were fed with fresh fruits, vegetables, and meat, and bread each and every day. The only rule 
was they could not hoard any of the food. So if they didn't finish what was on their plate, it would be returned to the kitchen. But again, Europeans in particular were really impressed with how well the Quakers had designed this institution. And this is the hatch through which the guard would deliver trays of food. But the human contact between the guard and the prisoner was kept to a minimum. And here we see a model of Eastern State. We can recognize its neo-Gothic design, its fortress in the facade. We see the tiers. Again, these tiers were the original design. The longer tiers were the second afterthought because of overcrowding. Before the institution was even completed, they were already dealing with more prisoners than the institution was built for, which is part and parcel to the prophecy of prisons, which is they will always be subject to crowding, overcrowding, and putting prisoners in an institution beyond its capacity. Now we're going to pause, come back in a few moments with episode four with more details about Eastern State.